Now, let's figure out what width our perimeter border ceiling panels should be. This will help us determine our ultimate grid layout. Since buildings are not usually perfectly square, you know that you're going to have some border cut panels. The most pleasing visual is achieved when your border panels are no less than 10 inches wide and the opposite wall has the exact same size border panel achieving proper room balance. We're going to use the Handy Construction Master Pro calculator app, but a regular calculator will work as well. If our room is 28 feet 9 inches wide, let's figure on installing 26 feet of full size 2x2 two two ceiling panels. That leaves 2 feet 9 inches of panels for our borders, which when divided by 2 leaves us with 1 foot 4.5 inches or 16.5 inch border panels down each side. Small sliver 4.5 inch border panels would not look good, but these 16.5 inch border panels will look great and achieve proper room balance. Now, let's figure our borders for the remaining two sides. If the length of our room is 68 feet 8 inches, let's use 66 of that total for our full size panels and split the difference between our remaining 2 foot 8 inches. Divided by 2, that leaves us 1 foot 4 or 16 inch border panels down these other two opposing sides. To ensure that our grid installation is nice and square, it's important to install two perpendicular dry line or control line strings to serve as a perfectly square benchmark to install our grid off of. We will run our first dry line down the length of the building. We already know that the border panels here will be 16 and a half inches. Let's add 24 for the width of a full size panel. This will be 40 and a half inches and place our dry line dead center running parallel with our first main runner. We really need that dry line to be just touching the outside edge of this main runner. So after adding a half inch for a 15 16 inch main runner, this places our dry line at 41 inches off the long wall. The second dry line will run the width or shorter dimension and will line up with the center of the first full size tile. With 16 inch borders along the short wall, plus half of a full size 24 inch tile, which is 12 inches, we are left with this dry line located 28 inches off the short wall. Now, with our dry lines up representing our first main runner placement, we are ready to install our four foot on center 12 gauge hanger wires. Without the dry lines, it's difficult to know where to install our first run of hanger wires. Here, we are tying wires to the eyelag screws, but you may be shooting wires with a Hilti gun into concrete deck. After your first run of wires, simply move over four feet and install your second run and so forth. Tying wires is easy, provided you leave a long tail that you can bend up into a handle for easy wrapping, three wraps and three inches. Use of wire cutters can also aid in tying as well as shown here. Again, you want to get at least three full wire wraps within three inches to meet code. It's important that your wires drop plumb or vertical. They should always be within one and six of plumb. This means that for every inch a wire is moved to the right or left of plumb, there should be at least six inches of vertical wire drop. For example, if you move a wire two inches out of plumb, you must have at least 12 inches of vertical drop. If it is not possible to achieve a one and six wire drop, then you must countersplay an additional equally sloped wire in the opposing direction to maintain symmetry. As we install our main runners level with the wall angle, we will ultimately block our laser's horizontal line with the main runner's placement. That's easy to fix. Just lower your laser three inches and level by attaching your magnetic reflector card to the bottom of your grid as you install and level it. Our first main runner will install parallel to the first long dry line, keeping the dry line on the outside edge of the main. It's always important to have a wire in close proximity to the end of a main runner. Counting back from where we want our first main runner to end, it will be eight feet plus one foot 
for a total of nine feet back to the dry line intersection. Here we are putting a tape at our last wire location for the main runner splice, which will be your strongest install. We are measuring back nine feet and marking the route hole that our perpendicular dry line intersection will pass under. From this dry line intersecting location that we marked, we will measure back 28 inches, which represents from the wall to the dry line intersection. Here we will cut the main. This is important. We will repeat measuring from the dry line to the wall for each four foot on center starting main runner that we install. After that, mains will continue on as full size main runners that always end within three inches of a hanger wire location. Notice here how our perfectly measured main runner has a hanger wire hole within three inches of the main beam splice. If you are hanging mains that have a fire expansion notch, like 8300 or 7400 mains, you must add an additional wire within three inches of either side of the expansion notch. Notice how the grid is being leveled to the laser card every time a wire is attached. Again, remember to measure back from the dry line and cut your other starting main runners like you did the first one. Each starting main runner should have the same cross T route hole passing directly over the short dimension dry line. Without this preparation, your cross T's would never visually line up straight. Let's install the four foot cross T's with the first T spaced 16 inches off of our parallel starting wall. All other four foot cross tees are then 24 inches on center. Once you hear the positive click, you know that the tee has engaged the route hole. When it's time to cut a four foot cross tee that runs perpendicular into the long wall, butt the white flange of the tee to the outside edge of the wall angle, then mark and cut the cross T to the outside edge of the parallel main runner, where the dry line is also located. Next, simply spin the T 180 degrees and install it. It will be perfectly cut to size. Five to seven spring clamps are a must for every installer. These clamps are your extra set of hands to hold the T's in place until you are ready to permanently secure with a pop rivet. We are at the point now where we need to square our two starting main runners and their cross tees to our dry lines. This is the short line. Notice how light taps adjust the route hole directly over the dry line. Same thing goes for the main runner. Just a few light taps to bring it alongside the dry line. Our spring clamps give just the right amount of tension to let our border tees move when tapped for adjustment to the dry line. After we are certain that our grid is square to both dry lines, cross diagonally measure a four x four grid module. Even if all four foot cross tees are installed, measure a four x four module. If our starting grid module is square, both diagonal measurements should be the exactly the same. If they are not, push your module's four foot tees to the right and clamp to remove slack and remeasure. If you are still out, adjust your short dry line and remeasure until you are square. It is so crucially important to achieve perfect squareness at this starting corner of the room. Once this starting grid is square, the rest of your installation will continue on this way. Now that you are square, Let's permanently keep it that way by pop riveting our grid to the wall angle on these two perpendicular starting walls. You may still have some cross tees to install, so do this now. When stabbing a cross tee into the route hole, always stab to the right of an opposing cross tee. While finishing your tees and your pop rivets, constantly readjust to the dry line if needed, because when you're finished with this starting corner and it's square, the rest of your job is virtually guaranteed to be square. 
Do the harder detail work in the beginning corner to guarantee the rest of the installation continues on smoothly. Now that our starting corner is complete, let's finish tying any remaining wires and move on. It's always best to wait and finish your final wire ties until the end, just in case there's any final leveling needed.